Hello, everybody. Happy St. Patrick's Day. As you well imagine, this is not Sunday, but it's Wednesday, March 17th. And I want to find these fine items on sale at the thrift store. So if you have a shopping for your holiday needs, please consider our thrift store. But anyway, happy St. Patrick's Day to you. And I'd like to look at this upcoming gospel this Sunday. It's from John chapter 12, 20 to 33. Some Greeks who had come to worship at the Passover feast came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew went, and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will my servant be. The follow honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour, but it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd there heard it and said it was thunder. Others said, an angel spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, the voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the rule of the world will be driven out. And when I'm lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this, indicating the kind of death he would die. The Gospel of the Lord. As you realize, we're getting closer and closer to the great feast of Easter, but previous to Easter, we have to go through Holy Week, and of course, Holy Week, it's the Good Friday, and you, you hear the tenor of the gospel speaking about Jesus, hmm? being lifted up from the earth, turned to myself, dying to oneself, and you know that the end is not far off, it's approaching. But anyway, it was, uh, it was the Greeks, he started off, and this little pericope here, this little narration, was only found in the Gospel of John, and the fourth was written to prove the truth of Christianity. And notice it was the Greeks. Hmm? It was some Greeks who had come. Now, the Greeks had this thirst, a curiosity for wisdom. And you may know some people like this. They go from philosophy to philosophy, maybe from religion to religion, trying to find the right one. Hmm? And somehow they're never satisfied. They're always restless. They think they, you know, you think... They settled in one, but then they want to look someplace else and someplace else. And this may be the case even with these, perhaps these Greeks as well. And so they hear about Jesus and say, well, this is the, the celebrity, the name that he's speaking about. And that phrase, we would like to see Jesus. So I second that. <laughs> I would too. I imagine all of us would love to see Jesus. So they go to Philip. And why Philip? Well, we're not sure, but perhaps because Philip is a Greek name. So maybe they thought, well, a Greek name, maybe his distant cousin, who knows, with Greek or something, maybe have a little more in, in track with him, right? Sort of like on the Feast of St. Patrick, he had to go see a, a priest, his name is Patrick, you think he may get in. So they go to Philip, and Philip passes on to Andrew, and Andrew goes rightly to Jesus. And so now, guess what? They're going to see Jesus. Mm-hmm. But anyway, um, Jesus speaks, and he says, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Whoa, now when the Jews hear this, the Son of Man to be glorified, Son of Man comes from a term in the book of Daniel, which is sort of symbolic, but now it becomes in the flesh, the Son of Man. In the Jews' mind, in, the, in their mind, when the golden age comes, they will be rulers of the world. But they realize... How can we be the rulers of the world? We're a small little weak nation. We can never accomplish that. So to accomplish that, it will have to take God's direct intervention. And the intervention is the Son of Man. I think, oh my, here he is, Jesus. Whoa, he is the one. He will lead us. We may be small, we may be weak, but we will have God and he will lead us. And he said, the Son of Man will be glorified glorified. <laughs> when the Jews hear that, glorified means that they will conquer the other nations. 
and those other nations will be groveling at their feet, and they will be supreme, they'll be above all, they will be, I just, as we think of the word glorified, <laughs> oh, that great day, it's coming. But that's not what Jesus meant by Son of Man to be glorified. In fact, it's the opposite. And I think if they <laughs> knew that directly, they would have been, what? Yeah, because glorified means being crucified to the cross. What kind of son of man is that? Getting, you know, crucified, being put to death. But that's what Jesus meant. And he said, whoever serves me must die to myself. He must, you know, he must hate this life. For those who love this life, there's two things, there are two, sort of two characteristics. One, selfishness. Two, they seek security. That's what usually drives those who, you know, enraptured by this life here. Those are the two things they seek. They are selfish and seek security. You know, and that is a good way to examine our own conscience about that too, right? I think we all want security. Hmm? It's, a it's, you know, it's necessary, of course. And we tend to be selfish. That's the gene in all of us to, be, to take care of ourselves first, right? We saw that during the pandemic, you know, or anytime there's some sort of hurricane coming, the gas stations, <laughs> people fill up the things, we're selfish. So Jesus says the opposite. You must let go of that, not be clinging to this life here, but living for the life to come, eternal glory. So we die to ourselves and we must, you want to, you know, we must follow Christ. It's a challenge to fight against that selfishness, that desire for security, but realize this life is, is passing and it passes quickly. We're really here for a moment. Our goal should always be, in our mind, our intention is I want to be in eternity with the Lord. I want to follow him. I want to be like him. That should be our driving force. So you have a blessed, blessed Lent, blessed Sunday, and the top of the morning or top of the afternoon to you. God bless you.